Well, as gardeners, we often think that what we're doing is really helping out the earth. And certainly as an organic gardener, I feel very strongly that I'm making the earth a better place, taking care of the soil and making better habitats for animals. But lo and behold, I come out to Shelby Bottoms Greenway, a nature park located in East Nashville, one of my favorite places. And I walk around and discover that maybe I'm causing some problems myself. So here to talk to us some more about it is Jill Smith, our urban forestry specialist. And um, my first question, Jill, is, you know, I'm looking at this tree and this wonderful vine all over it, and I'm just thinking this is really neat, but I think maybe it's not so neat. Tell me about it. Well, the vine that you see growing up this tree is English ivy, and it is really covering this tree and is competing directly with the tree for sunlight. Um, it's English ivy, implying that it's from England, so it's not native to this area. and has been used as landscaping plants um, at homes, along rock walls and on their houses, and, and it has escaped into this park and has been choking um, this tree out. It competes directly with the tree for sunlight. Um, so this is uh, one of those invasive exotic plants that I hear about? Yes, this is an invasive exotic plant, um, just meaning that it's not from this area, it's not native or indigenous to this location, and it's invasive, meaning that it um, will dominate an area, it will take over an area and become a pest plant, or it's been termed biological pollution, um, or even a noxious weed. Well, these are sort of harsh terms for something that's all pretty and growing up the hackberry tree, which a lot of people don't like. So really, what's the effect if it sort of takes over the hackberry and the hackberry dies? I mean, it's still something green growing. Yes, um, but because it has a um, superior, almost dominating um, ability, it will not only just take over this tree, it will continue on and take over other trees and um, replace the forest with um, just this species as well as a couple other species making it kind of a monoculture um, forest type which um, is detrimental to the forest and is not as pretty to look at. Well I guess we should go walk through the park and see what else I might have been guilty of causing in some little way. Let's go okay. see what's out there. All right. Well Jill as we're coming off the trail here I can see some of this privet that you were talking about. Now is it about to flower and are we going to have a problem with this? Yes, um, privet, as you can see, is a shrub, um, but can grow to tree size. And it is getting close to flowering. Um, these are flower buds that form in clusters. And then in the fall, you'll be able to see um, the purple fruit hanging off the tree, or off the shrub. And um, it's an evergreen, and so it's green year round, and it's just put on some brand new leaves. And so, um, here it comes, attacking us. And I guess this is one of the reasons why people have liked it for the uh, size and the fast growth. And the birds, though, are going to just be distributing those seeds everywhere. That's correct. Yeah. Now, of course, um, well, my favorite, but the one I've finally gotten rid of at home would be this wonderful honeysuckle. Well, but it's beautiful, Jill. Um, what can you tell us about it as to why it's a problem? Well, it um, also, like privet, grows very tall, can grow 15 up to 15 feet tall and can outcompete trees. Right now it's full of flowers and um, will often have a fragrance associated with them. That's why a lot of people have used it as landscaping plants. Um, it's wide spreading. It can um, outcompete the little tree saplings that are growing underneath it that would be replacing um, and restoring the, the integrity of this forest here. And in the fall, you'll see it covered with red fruit that the birds will eat and disperse throughout this, this area. Well, it's such a beautiful plant, and I guess that is one of the problems, is you get these things that are really very attractive, and then next thing you know, your birds have flown out to the park. But then there are some other things that I guess we don't even think of as wild plants in any way. Certainly honeysuckle, a lot of people, I think, just think that's what grows out in the woods. Um, but then you've got this gorgeous plant here, which I can understand completely why someone would want it. And it looks like something I see in catalogs all the time, fast growing, but I never can remember its name. Yeah, you can smell the aroma coming off of this plant. It's just so sweet. This is multiflora rose, 
Um, it was used as hedgerows between um, farms and it, um, like any other rose bush, is covered with thorns, but it produces a rose hip that's also distributed by birds. And it's something you can't control. That's why it's an invasive plant. And so, also another problem. And this is not native to Tennessee? Not native to Tennessee. Well, we'll have to go look and see what else we've got taken over. Well, Jill, one of the problem plants I think I see here, and although I never can remember its name, it seems to me this plant looks a lot more familiar when it's on the ground as a beautiful ground cover, and it's going up this tree. So what is it? This is Climbing Euonymus, or Purple Winter Creeper, and it is usually bought as a ground cover, but it, it, being a vine is trying to compete with the trees for the sunlight so it is growing up the tree and as it grows up the tree it will produce branches that will produce berries so that is how it um, distributes its seeds through the um, through growing up trees and producing berries oh so our beautiful ground cover has been flown in by the birds as well That's okay right. so I'm feeling a little guiltier um, let's go look at maybe something I wouldn't have thought of before, a tree that I hear is a problem. Okay. Trees are not really something I would normally think of as problem plants, as exotic invasives, and I've got one of these wonderful mimosas at home, so explain to me what the problem with it is. Well, this problem, this problem plant um, shades out the rest of the plants that would grow underneath it. Um, right now it's just starting to put on leaves. Um, but when this is fully leafed out, there will just be shade underneath it, and no sunlight will be able to get down to the ground to regenerate some of the things, um, shrubs and trees that we, um, that we know, like oaks and hickories, to replace the forest. Um, it produces seed pods that are wind dispersed, and they'll form these clusters and groupings of all the same tree, which is harmful for the animals that would not feed on this plant. Um, invasive exotic plants don't have many predators like insects and diseases that would keep it in, under, under control. And so this plant would run rampant like the rest of the shrubs and vines that we've seen already, which in turn affects the animal populations as well as the plant populations in these areas. So if I'm getting this plant just for the hummingbirds that are attracted to it, maybe there's something else I could look for. That's correct. Well, Jill, the thing that's made the most difference to me as a gardener and changing my habits is education. Seeing a lot of lectures, coming out to these parks and seeing what's going on. And I wonder really what other kind of educational programs that the park itself is putting on and educational efforts you're making. Well, this is an example of one of the education efforts we're making. Um, this sign has been um, posted so that visitors that walk by will be able to learn a little bit uh, without a formal education program and they can just be on the lookout for some of the invasive plants that are in this park including animals as well. Um, other education efforts that we have un undergoing are um, we have two brochures that are available through the Warner Park Nature Center. One that talks about invasive exotic plants uh, lists the plants and tells why they're a problem, as well as the replacement plants, those that are good for uh, using your, in your landscape that are native to Middle Tennessee. So these are both available through the Warner Park Nature Center. Also, we have programs ongoing, and these programs are listed on our Nature Center schedule, and they can get involved in helping us to remove these plants, both in Shelby bottom screenway and also with Warner Parks. Well, that's great. Well, so there's a lot of education and let's go look at a couple of other things and you can tell me some about what you're doing to manage this problem. Okay, great. Julie, this is an example of a wonderful plant that is native to Middle Tennessee. It um, is called crossvine and is available uh, through nurseries. Uh, not many people know about this plant and how wonderful it is in this great display of flowers it exhibits in, in May. So I'm sure you would prefer that we buy those plants so that if 
they travel, then we have natives traveling, which I can see the benefit to that. Now in the meantime, I'm just worried a little bit about my Greenway area here, because I love it so much. So what are you doing to get rid of these exotic plants? Well, this is the big job, and it's hard to do this with just a few people. It really has to be a community-involved project. Um, we need volunteers to partake in uh, removing these plants and what it entails is just removing these plants by the roots and it keeps them from growing back and um, helps to restore the natural integrity of these areas. So are you tell me you're just pulling them up? Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. That's wonderful because I know a lot of people worry at their homes that they're going to take these plants out, that they're going to have to use a lot of chemicals and a lot of things that are going to be very dangerous and that would worry me with the the animals that are out here. Mm -hmm. So you just yanking them up and hoping they don't come back? Is that That's basically correct. it? That's correct. And anyone can really get involved in helping, but it's got to be a community-wide effort. And where would we call if we wanted to charge on out and help save the parks? Well, Warner Park Nature Center has a regular schedule of invasive exotic plant removal days. And we're beginning to have those kind of days here at Shelby Bottoms as well. Jill, thank you so much for educating me and all of our gardeners about what's going on in the parks and how we can contribute both good and bad. I really appreciate that a lot. And now I think what I'm going to do is take care of my guilt and head out to one of our local nurseries and find some of those wonderful native plants for my yard. Well, thank you so much for watching. And if you liked this video, you're gonna love everything else that we have in our archives and running currently. Go to our channel, click subscribe, and continue watching. See you next time.